today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Twin sisters in and out of rehab over 80 times each. Heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, anything they can get. Beautiful twins. These two needles are like my children. With an ugly secret. You said we're out hooking for drugs and we get more because we're twins. There's nothing that can help me. I robbed a bag of pennies from a blind man. I like to rob the UPS guy and the mailman. And you got him along. Has the entire family hit rock bottom? I would do anything to have them back. But they can't. Oh my God. Do not make excuses for these girls to their sisters. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Well, twin sisters, Talia and Alyssa, are identical in every way. They look alike, they sound alike, they share the same mannerisms, and have been inseparable since birth. But there's something else identical about these twins. They're both drug addicts who say they have been in and out of rehabs and detoxes over 80 times each. They claim every facility in their state has blackballed them, banned them, said they cannot come there. You may be asking yourself why we're trying to save these young women today since they don't seem to care if they live or die. Well, we're doing this for a number of reasons, not the least of which is their three younger sisters and their parents, Renee and Jackie, do care. And they say that these girls need at least one last chance and they believe that I am that last chance. So how bad is it? Their parents say it's only a matter of time before not one, but both of their twin daughters are found dead. My identical twin daughters are drug addicts. Heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, anything they can get. I don't even have a guess as how this all started. I feel like they had a good home, good family, good sisters. I've just recently found out that Alyssa injected Talia for the first time. Alyssa is the ringleader. If one of the twins is doing drugs, the odds are against the other one being sober. They've prostituted themselves for the money for the drugs. I can't imagine the lowest points and what they've done in order to get drugs. Alyssa OD'd one son father. Day. I'm going to start an IV on you, in case we have to give you one. We've taken the girls to the ER 6, 10, 12 times easy. We've tried everything from treatment centers to detoxes to sober houses, and nothing, nothing has worked. You name it, they've stolen it from us. Cell phones, headphones, endless amounts of money. Talia was arrested for stealing. The last straw was she stole my 16-year-old daughter's school iPad. I put locks on these doors here because of Talia and Alyssa. It's been so bad, I've had drug dealers call my house. Then drug vendors and crack, coke, and dope. They robbed multiple people. My biggest fear is that somebody will come to this house and hurt me or hurt my kids. I have a 70-inch TV in my room, 12 screens of surveillance. This is the driveway. That's the back door. A couple of times, I have seen drug dealers in this house on my security system. I found out Talia was in the street. She did call us begging us to please come home and she'll get help and I said to Jack I need to go get her and he said there's no way you will go get her we are done she's gonna do this on her own I've told them many many times that they're welcome in this house if they're not gonna stay sober they're not gonna stay here it took everything in me not to go pick her up and bring her back here again I'd do anything in the world for them but this is something that they have to do on their own Well, I'm sorry for your circumstance, but I'm glad you're here. Thank you. But you say he's willing to let them die if that's what it is, and you're not. <laughs> I'm not. Everybody says to let them go, but I can't. <laughs> so, Dad, where are you on that? I, I don't think I've given up, and I won't 
can, I won't give up, but like I said, I think they have to realize that they've hit their bottom. It got to the point where we can't uh, let them affect the other kids' lives in the house. Are we going to sacrifice these to save this one? As a parent, that's an ugly truth, but that's part of the truth, right? I've never looked at it like that, but yes. You don't know the whole truth here because right. you've said, I, <laughs> ugly truth, I don't want to see it. You have to know the truth here. Alicia and Talia, they agreed to let us follow them as they went about their nightly needle routine. We did this from a documentary standpoint. We don't comment, we don't encourage, we don't discourage, we don't intervene, we don't stop, we don't start. We are fly on the wall. Within 22 minutes of meeting up, the twins shot up four times. Take a look. Open this bag. I'm getting water. Dying fresh, I am. I'm trying all day. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's all you. I always go after her because she's spoiled. I have no veins left. It's always messy. For disasters. And actually, that light helps me find the veins. I'm able to hit myself right away, always. I just get right into this one, go right in. And then right after the shot, I'm gonna need more. This is what happens. And we're done at the same time. <laughs> Five minutes ago, I felt really sick and uncomfortable. My legs hurt and didn't even want to look at her until she gave me my now. I'm like happy to be next to her. The first time we ever got high was together. We did a uh, perk 30. Uh, yeah, oxycodone 30 milligrams. We sniffed them. We had a friend who offered it to us, and we did it at the exact same time. But I took it. I took off faster. I was addicted quick. I started using the needle after her. She convinced me to do it for the first time. I talked her into it, and I, I, I feel so guilty. And then from there on, I just never stopped. I keep going until I get more and more high to the point where I can't take it. And I have, like, bumps in my hands from doing it all day. My hands are all <coughs> bumps. I'm gross. <laughs> my hands are all puffed up right now. <laughs> I always miss a little bit in my hand, and my hands are all messed up. I'll sit here and, and call people and beg for it all day. And no. it, it makes me sick. Like, I, I get so high, I get sick, and I have to puke all day. <laughs> Hurts are so dirty. It's, it's just, it's not sterile. It's disgusting. This is why I start getting hot and sweaty. And my hand's hurting really bad. Yeah, this is like the typical life. Like, we just sit on the couch all night. And try to get more. And try and get more. We're always waiting for the next shot, you know? Mm. Yeah, right there. All right, I need to make my shot. Ow. Now. Nothing can stop us from getting high, ever. I'm more aggressive with it. I'll shoot it anywhere. I'll shoot it in my feet if I have to. My friend died of a heroin overdose. I did it in the bathroom of his wake. Like, you do it anywhere. Anywhere. I'm addicted to the needle. I love the needle. I love the way it hurts. I love everything about it. I never want to stop. I just want to keep going. These two needles are literally like my right children. Now. Like, and if I lose one of them, I go crazy. I'm really, really, really high right now. Too itchy. I just wanna, I just wanna like go like. So it's like not even the, it's syrup. not even the fact that we need more. It's like all in your head that like if you don't get it, you're gonna die. So what's your reaction? I see the reality of of, addi of addiction. Unfortunately, it's my kids. Mm -hmm. Alyssa's boyfriend slash drug dealer doesn't want Talia there because she steals. He's even had to put cameras in the bedroom because Alyssa steals from him. So even the drug dealers are putting up security cameras to keep the girls from stealing from them. And they don't have money, so they're eating out of dumpsters. But you give them money. I give her food. I will take her to the grocery store and give her some food. To me, giving her food is not the same as giving her money. But you know she'll take that food across the street and return it and get money back for it, right? 
No. Mom, these girls have one currency, that's drugs. They're not even allowed in our house anymore. It's... Okay, I gotta know when they come out here and I start talking to them that you've got my back. I got your back, your lap, your chair. <laughs> All right, next, the search for drugs did not stop once the twins got to L.A. I, I'm tell, it, let me tell you, it, you have to understand what we're dealing with here. We're going to meet them after the break and hear how they got high in Hollywood. I like to rob the UPS guy and the mailman. When I was like 18 years old, I got a job at a nursing home. I wanted to rob the elderly. I robbed a bag of pennies from a blind man, and he was in his bed. I just said, let's rob a liquor store, get the gun. And later, you just laughed about it. Twins, they like that, ha ha ha. We're out hooking for drugs, and we get more drugs because we're twins. For me, like that high in the end, it's worth it. Tomorrow, she suspects her husband. You say that he's injecting you with poison every night. Absolutely not. Seen the hole on my arm, eye, neck. I wear this neck brace to keep him from poking me with the needles. Is he poisoning her? He tampered with the food. Your lab reports show no poison. Or is she delusional? You said you would shave your head to show me where he's put needles in you. Go for it. Then on Monday, did her son's girlfriend push him over a railing? He was drunk, and you were yelling at him. I thought I heard her say she pushed him. Did you put your hands on him? No. Well, why did he fall? That's Monday. Every night we tell ourselves, like, we're going to try in the morning to do something different, and we never do. The morning never comes. Our lowest moment in the hotel room. Yeah, some guy forced us to sleep with him and said if we didn't, that there was going to be... we couldn't get drugs, and we had to take our, we had to take turns. And, and he held us hostage there all night long. I remember the time we were in the bathroom, and, and we did it, and we were like, we, we cried. And we were like, why are we doing this? Like, why? Who, who and are we? Homeless, identical, and addicted. That's the day-to-day -day reality of twin sisters, Elisa and Talia, who both say getting high is all they think and care about. Now, they admit they smuggled drugs on the plane to get here. So how did they survive the last 48 hours in Hollywood? We're here in Hollywood. We've been searching for needles all day. This is all we have left from what we say from Boston. And I make it so it's perfectly even, because we only have a tiny bit left. I'm in. Thank God. But I'm done. I'm good. Now I'm calm. Uh -oh. It's in. And we're good. <laughs> I feel so much better. But now the only problem is, is we have nothing left. So we need to go hustle on the streets of Hollywood. And we can do it. We need to find people who look homeless or we're gonna go to an AA meeting or an NA meeting and try to find people who don't look sober and ask them where they got their And we're gonna obviously look cute because we can manipulate any man. We get dressed up and we go find drugs. We need to go hustle. Okay, so we couldn't find heroin in California, so what we found... We, found, we went out and we found... Crystal meth. We have some crystal right here. And this is my first time doing it, so I'm really scared. I don't know how much to do. Do it. Okay. It's clogged. I need my elastic. Okay. Here we go. Talia, she didn't get it yet, so we still have some. She's shooting it right now, and it's gone. So we'll see how she feels in like eight seconds. Watch my pupils. Ready? They get huge. And I get crazy dizzy. Oh my god. You wrote me. Why? Because. I feel hopeless with my life, and I don't know what to do anymore. Do you really think that you'll wind up dead, or do you think you're the exceptions that'll prove the rule, and you'll beat the odds, and you'll wind up okay? You'll you, you'll live through this. There's times where I say, like, I don't mind if I overdose and die, or I, I'll say, 
maybe if I go to rehab, um, I'll learn how to be a better drug addict. Because yeah. well, I think you? we're invincible. I see it as you're afraid to live and not afraid to, to die. Yeah. And it's like an every day, every, like every half hour, you know that it could kill you. How long has it been since y'all shot up, had any kind of drugs at all? An hour. What, what did you have this morning? A lot of meth, and we've been awake for six days. Really H- how did you get it? I walked around, and I, I asked people, and we found it instantly. And they just gave it to you? I sold my a phone that um, a friend had just bought me. And you've just been in detox, right? I've, I just got out of detox yeah. a couple of weeks ago. The split second you got out, you gave her drugs? Yes. I didn't want to, but, like, I know how it feels to, like, be sick and, like, and want them. But she had just been through detox. She wanted them, though. So how do the twins get money for the drugs they need to keep from going into this withdrawal, getting sick? Well, I'm going to let them tell you. Take a look at this. Usually we always find drugs together, find money together, find ways and means to get money together. I have some stuff here that I stole out of people's cars. Phones, iPods. I was with someone and we had an idea. I just said, let's rob a liquor store. I know a perfect one. You're going to do it. Get the gun. When we got the rifle, he, he cocked it. He, he put a mask on. He put a mask on and he went in the liquor store and he robbed the liquor store blind. And he ran out, threw the, all the cash at me and we started driving. And we were counting the money on the way to the dealer. Didn't even think about like what just happened. Now, the person that I did it with has been sitting in jail for three months while I'm getting high. So I just feel like I'm kind of invisible until invincible until I get caught. When I was like 18 years old, I got a job as a home health aide at a nursing home. I wanted to rob the elderly, which sounds crazy, but elderly cool. always have money. Anything valuable, jewelry, cash, checkbooks. I robbed a bag of pennies from a blind man, and he was in his bed when I was in there. I got caught. My dad got me a really good lawyer, and I only got a month in jail and 18 months probation. We just keep getting away with it. From our family's house, we've stolen piggy banks, computers, iPads. TVs. Uh, TVs. I like to rub the UPS guy and the mailman. And we'll see a mailman leave a package and we'll take turns and we'll run up to the <laughs> stairs and we'll grab the package and we'll run back out and we can't wait to open it because sometimes like there's stuff of value from the yeah. UPS man and then we can sell that to our drug dealer. You were involved in armed robbery at a liquor store. Yes. Mm-hmm. Armed robbery, federal mail. You do understand these are felonies and federal crimes, right? Yes. When you got busted in the nursing home, you got caught. Yep. And you got him a lawyer. Yes, I got him out of it. Which one of you stole the necklace off your grandmother's urn? I did. I know I mean, they... it was it was both because we both went to sell it. Well, Alyssa and uh, Talia admit being identical twins has some advantages that, um, well, it just may break their parents' heart. We'll talk about that when we come back. Being identical twins, it's double the money, double the drugs, double the men. It's double everything because we're identical twins. And guys always say two is better than one, so... (laughs) <laughs> and later you'll miss your sisters I would do anything to have them back but they can't they please can't. do not make excuses for these girls to their sisters this February more emotion more surprises more drama and we're just getting started I had a traumatized three-year-old girl saying, my daddy hurt me. Where is he going to hurt you at? A child does not say those things unless she was coached. You cannot coach a three-year-old. Ask anyone. That is coaching. I came here to help my daughter, and you turned this into a giant circus. I'm done. The twins admit that thievery and manipulation 
aren't the only ways they score money for drugs. They say being a twin has its advantages on the streets. Older men kind of just want like me on one arm, her on the other. Younger men like they want quick. Yeah, get in and out. <laughs> Twins. Yeah. But the older men are more arm candy and, and the younger guys are the drug dealers. It's more come in and sleep with me and we'll help you out. One time we took turns, like she would go in the bathroom of the hotel and I would go in and sleep with him. He'd hand me some cash and then she'd go out and sleep with him and then he'd hand her some cash and then we'd just leave. Normally I have sex with all the dealers. Give me drugs for sex. I don't even want your cash. Being identical twins, it's double the money, double the drugs, double the men. It's double everything because we're identical twins. And guys always say two is better than one, so. <laughs> Okay, tell me what your reaction is as you watch your your life play down on screen. It's like, is this a joke? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, literally, this is normal to me. Getting high, being with my twin, manipulating people. Drugs are more important than survival to me. But you just laughed at that. I mean, you you just laughed about it. You said, hey, you know, Mm -hmm. Twins, they like that, ha, ha, ha. I mean, like, we're out selling our bodies. We're, we're out hooking for drugs, and we get more drugs because we're twins. Yeah, and I absolutely hate it. I hate it. I feel disgusting every time, but for me, like, that high in the end is worth it. You were talking about rock bottom earlier? So you've hit Do you rock think you've bottom. hit bottom? I've been dead how many times? Eight? Do you think you've hit bottom? No. Ugh. No. And watching that video, I just, I like, for some, like right now, I miss that. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't, but that, that's, I'm going to be honest, like, I, I miss that right now. It's the only sure. thing we know. You've OD'd four times, Alyssa. Yeah. Father's Day. Yeah. You said it took ten times the normal dose of Narcane just to bring you back. Yep. And I was mad. I was like, why did you do that? I didn't want to be saved. I didn't, I was mad. And I thought that was your rock bottom. I, I... What is it, you know, I, I don't get you guys. Has somebody given you that there's this some mythical rock bottom mm -hmm. that's some magical point that you hit before you get better? Because if they have, let me tell you, that's <laughs> Rock bottom is dead. And listen, you would think being twins, that if there was any degree of moral compass left, if there was any degree of moral fiber left, she would try to save her from what she knows is happening. And she would try to save her from what she knows is happening. I mean, they would just say, look, okay, maybe I'm irredeemable, maybe I'm not worth saving, but I am going to do what it takes to get my sister out of this life. I care more about her than me. Then get her out of this. You let her go to jail for you. Didn't she go to jail pretending to be I've you? I've done a lot of bad things for her, too. But didn't she go to jail pretending to be you? She, she, she had to use my ID and pretend to be me, yes. Yeah. So you had a jail sentence to do, and she served it pretending to be you. The jail still doesn't know that you never went to jail, right? She did it. I wouldn't have lasted, a, like, a minute. And that's the other thing. I've had her sectioned, um, locked no, no. up. I know, but I know. <laughs> there's nothing that can, I, I just, like, I just feel like there's nothing that can help me. In the back of your brain, think that there is a life, there is a better life, and that you got three sisters that really care about you. They do have three sisters. Yeah, three younger sisters. They're here. They all say the twins have destroyed their family. They're killing their parents. Let's hear what they have to say after the break. When I talk to Talia and Alyssa, I'm talking to a black hole. There is no soul, no emotion. It's never family first anymore. It's always drugs first. My sisters have become a disgusting disease. It's embarrassing to talk about them. My sisters have become a disgusting disease. When I talk to Talia and Alyssa, I'm talking to a black hole. There is no soul, no emotion. 
Personally, it's embarrassing to talk about them. It's never family first anymore. It's always drugs first. It's hard to explain to other people what I'm going through and what it's like. I haven't talked to them since two or three months. I have nothing to say to them. I see Talia and Alyssa as inhumane people. They don't care how they affect other people. They are selfish, manipulative drug addicts. I've seen needles in their closet, hidden in their shoes. I don't like to talk to my parents about it because it's just like, I want to handle it myself and I know they're stressed about it, so I just don't want them to think that I'm upset. It's not my fault that my sisters are drug addicts and it's not my fault that my mom and dad have to argue about this every single day and have to worry about where they are and who they're with. I don't know who they are or who they become. These were my loving sisters. I worry about my sisters hitting rock bottom. Timeless's rock bottom is going to be death. Okay, girls, I'm glad that you've joined us. I'm sorry that uh, you need to. I'm sorry we're in this situation. But um, what is your hope for your sisters? I just want them to be better. I want them to be back to the way they used to be. I think they need to realize that there's more to life than just this. They need to realize what they have in their future, not just this. Do you all miss your sisters? I don't even remember who they are. Honestly, don't. It's been so long. I would do anything to have them back. What do you all have to say? I'm at a point where I just want to, like, hug all of them, but, like, like I'm, like, I, I have to be, like, like kind of like a rock, so I... So it's it's fake. I, like I, I have to be fake because I'm, I'm embarrassed around them. I, I don't even know their ages, and they're all younger, and they're all doing, having jobs, and they're like building a life while I'm like, I'm like in the background and watching, and it's and not it's too just, late. Well, you have the option to get help, but you just don't. Pretty scary how I don't see emotion right now. I feel like I just had to program myself to become like cold-hearted and. Like, honestly, this is, like, the most incredible feeling right now in the whole world, but, like, it sucks that it has to be in California. Like, not home. I don't, I don't, I don't know home. And when we're walking around in L.A., finding drugs and laughing and holding hands, we're not thinking of, of them. We're not. I think about them when I'm alone and in bed and I'm high. And I, I already did everything that I had to, like, do, and then... I think about everything. You guys need to get your oh, mindset out of the drugs. You need to start thinking about everyone else and stop thinking about yourselves and how you're going to get the drugs. But they can't. They you need to get help. Like oh, my God. What? Just stop talking. Just please stop talking. No, no, no. Don't make excuses for these girls. Please do not make excuses for these girls to their sisters. They don't want to hear your excuses. They don't want to hear you apologize for them. They don't want to hear you make excuses for them. They want to hear you stand up and tell those girls that it's time to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, get off their ass, and get in the game. And it's time you grow the up and do it. And my friends, you have to do it. I don't it. get how this doesn't get <laughs> And it's not fair to these guys. If you want Every to die, it's day. your decision. That's selfish. Is to think of Rosie crying because you're dead. How do you not process that we're all here for you? <laughs> Get help and fix yourself. Every time I go to rehab, I tell myself wholeheartedly that <clears throat> this is the time that I'm going to get it. Literally, you could pass a lie detector test. Give me two days, and my mind is back where I started, where I'm going to find a way to get to my sister, and we're going to get high that night. And when I get that impulse, I, I, there's just something in me that, like, I have to act on it. I, there's, I, can't, I can't sit with myself. Just so you know, you have control over yourself what you do. You do. You're convincing yourself. You just don't think don't. about the consequences because but you've been what's spoiled the right and whatever. Answer? What's the right answer? The why? Right, I don't know the right answer. That's why we're here. I'll get involved and show you the way back. That would be amazing. I'm scared of you. So part of your brain's working. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is her husband injecting her with poison? Absolutely not. He will sneak up on me. Next thing I know, I'm feeling pain. If he's poisoning you, why are you not dead? That's tomorrow. I've lost a lot of friends due to heroin use. Literally every time I find out someone dies, 
I want to know where they got their drugs because I want to try that. Mm -hmm. I want to know like exactly who it came from and that, that's what I will chase. Obviously got them high enough to the point where they overdose. You're chasing something that is inevitably going to kill you. You're going to die. It's either jails, institutions, or death. And we've been to both, so mm -hmm. like there's one stop left. What if, what if there is a way for you to climb out of that life and into this one? Would you do it? Yes, in a second. If there was a way. I didn't even just question that in my head. I usually process things a hundred times. But there's no answer. And there's no answer you know. Because exactly. let's face it. No, it, yeah, right. Let's right. face it. Your reasoning and your logic is stunted when you started doing drugs because it changed mm -hmm. your brain. Yeah. I've been doing this for 45 years. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that I know something about getting from where you are to where you're going that you haven't been introduced to yet. Just a possibility. I'm not saying I do. There's just a possibility. You don't have to want to be sober. You just have to want to want to. Because right now, you don't want to be sober. And if you tell me you do, you're lying. <laughs> because right? I know that I'm going to, like, get sick. Of course. And I That's know that why I'm going to fail again. Do it. And I know that I have nowhere to live, so why not? Exactly. That's why I'm not asking you. You don't want to be sober. I'm just saying you don't have to want to be sober. You just have to want to want to. And that's a big difference. We like, it's like throughout the whole day, even. We're like, what are we doing? Yeah, but it's usually like when we're high is but when then, we get into these conversations of like, I hate my life. She hates her life. We hate our lives together. We hate being high. We hate the hustle. So let's get high. The only thing we can do in that situation is get high. Because it's your only option, right? Because everybody else, you either steal from, betray, or manipulate. Mm -hmm. You can't steal from me. You can't betray me because I don't trust you, so you can't violate my trust. And you can't even almost manipulate me. But what I will do, if you want to want to, I'll get involved and show you the way back. That would be amazing. I'm scared of you. <laughs> Yeah. That's so part honest. of your brain's working. Good. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. I don't think That's I don't think best. you've ever said that about anyone. That's the best. And I've ever seen saw. some That's scary people. That's the first honest thing you said in months. Do you realize how lucky you are to be here? Like this is it. This is the end of the road. No more road. No more detox. No more people. No more oh. nothing. This is it. Crazy. Do you want to invite me into this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't get involved in everybody's life unless they invite me to get involved. And then once I get involved, I, I get involved. And that means that you're going to get clean. That means that I have, like, a chance. That means you're going to get clean. That means you're going to get clean. Because that means that I'm going to haunt you <laughs> till the end of the world, until you get clean. Are you kidding me? No. When you try to run off, it's going to make a really obnoxious noise. This show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Or you can call 323 461 Phil. That's 323 461 7445. You have to agree with me to follow the protocol that I'm setting up to keep you from sabotaging yourselves. Are you willing to do that? Yes, I am. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. 
This is T.J. Howard right here. He's corporate director for the Origins Behavioral Health Care. I flew him in here today for you. Now, they have a center located on South Padre Island in Texas. They have one in West Palm Beach, Florida, and Vero Beach, Florida. And one is going to be in one place, the other one's going to be in another. And when you get there, you're going to go through a very thorough, comprehensive evaluation. They are very sophisticated in setting up comprehensive programs. This is Dr. Frank Lawless right here. Raise your hand, Frank, so we can see you. Dr. Lawless is the chairman of the Dr. Phil Advisory Board. Uh, he is uh, uh, the, the co-founder and director of the Lawless PVP and Peace Center in Dallas, Texas. And Frank, at this point, their brains, I've said their brains have been hijacked. Do you agree with what I'm saying about that? I, they couldn't stop. It isn't just a matter of withdrawal. I don't think they could stop this until we reformat some neurological patterns if they wanted to. I agree with you. Uh, the pleasure centers are, and I like your word, being hijacked. So consequently, we have to begin there at that deeper level beneath the cortex level that uh, to be able to change these brain patterns so that your pleasure centers can be activated in the most positive way. Now, you're going to need medical supervision immediately or you're going to go into withdrawal. So I also flew nurses in here to help you and accompany you to where you're going. Now, how am I going to keep you from running off once you get there? Tim? Oh, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. You're going to wear these, and they're going to have the GPS tracking units. <laughs> and when you try to run off, or if you try to not charge this, it's going to make a really obnoxious noise. I mean, barbed wire wasn't even that scary. You want to take that and you want to take uh -uh. that? Because you're also going to have to sign this. That's hers. This one's yours. Because if you get off somewhere, this is going to trigger, it's going to trigger origins and it's going to trigger the police. Dear law enforcement, I am a drug addict and if you're reading this, I have left my treatment facility against medical advice. There is not a doubt in my mind that if I do not return, I will die from my addiction. I beg of you, do whatever it takes to return me to my treatment program. Do not listen to my excuses. Do not believe my tears and promises. The only way I will survive is to be locked up in jail or return to my treatment facility. If I have left on the street, I will die. Sincerely, Talia or Alyssa, I need you guys to sign those for me. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't steal my pen. <laughs> That's witnessed by me. Okay, I would like uh, Petra and Rocco on stage to install these devices because this starts now. <laughs> Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Talia and Alyssa have agreed to go to treatment and we have secured their ankle bracelets. And uh, you will be accompanied by attendants from your respective facilities and the nurses that will be helping you because, as I say, there's no virtue in getting sick and going back. So we'll be helping you to medically manage that. Uh, you will also be accompanied by 
someone else should you decide that you want to take a flyer even before you get on the flight. He is an off-duty LAPD officer. <laughs> Sixteen months ago, Amanda and her two sisters, Valene and Tiffany, sat on this stage, all three dangerously addicted to heroin. Well, I am proud to say all three sisters are still sober and doing great. Here they are. <laughs> Amanda, it's so good to see you. So tell me, what's the journey been like? Um, I mean, it hasn't been easy. I literally sat in that chair next to my two best friends. We were killing each other. How I was addicted to the needle. How am I not going to stick a needle in my arm every day? Like, I'm telling you, like, it's possible. I'm sitting here. I haven't set, stuck any substance in my body in 16 months. It's possible. Well, I am really proud of you and proud of your sisters. Thank Please. You. Pass my love on to them, will you? I will. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to T.J. Hauer and Origins Behavioral Health Care for helping us today. And uh, Frank Lawless, thank you for always being there. Thanks for drilling down on these stories. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. And, um, and Bernard, thank you for... Uh, making sure these girls get on that airplane like they need to be. Oh, uh, thank you for being here today. So long. <laughs> think we got a plan, Brad. Uh, so uh, think we got a plan. Uh, just make this work. I want you sitting in that chair down there. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. That's right.